All right. Uh, so uh, thanks to my uh, viewers and patrons, um, I bought this um, radio um, for a couple purposes. One, um, I, just, I wanted something to try and fix. And um, I thought that it would be interesting for a couple of reasons. I know a lot of viewers on the channel are not interested in ham radio, but a majority of my viewers on the channel are interested in ham radio. So I'm trying to make a balance there. So even though it's a radio, um, it's an old enough radio that um, uh, all of the all of the circuits. You're not going to be able to see them here, but all of the circuits are single transistor. So there's no well, there's a couple ICs, but it's mostly all ICs. I mean, mostly all transistors, discrete transistors. So, in the process of trying to bring this radio back to life, I'm hoping to shoot some video on how to troubleshoot. I'm, I know that will interest a lot of people, and how to measure voltages um, in. Uh, analog circuits. I've had some requests to people who were interested in my op amp series and my transistor series and stuff, go back and do some uh, analog circuitry. So this will have analog circuitry on it. It doesn't just have to be um, high frequency. It can be uh, audio because this is a radio. So it's going to have a uh, high frequency, medium frequency and, and low frequency. So it's going to have it all in there. It'll have power supplies and stuff. So it'll be interesting. And it also has a bunch of digital circuitry. It has a, a rotary encoder that I think might be broken on this thing. Uh, so we can try to figure that out. And um, it has a phase lock loop. So that's kind of advanced um, analog circuitry. And these are notorious for having bad phase lock loops in them. And um, it might be possible that we do um, a replacement, uh, maybe put in a direct digital synthesis chip with an Arduino or something. Um, we might be able to replace part of the circuitry on this thing, depending on what's wrong with it. I, I, I don't know what's wrong with it. Uh, I got it for 60 bucks free shipping. So I thought that was a, a fair price for something that's completely trash, um, but we'll try to we'll try to do something with it. Um, so this is the front panel. Like I said, it's got a rotor encoder to set the frequency. So what is it? It's a, an ICOM IC245. It's a two meter FM transceiver. There is a, a unit you could get as an option that allowed you to do single sideband, um, but this one does not. But this one has a key input in the back, so I think this one will do CW. I'm not quite sure about that. Um, maybe not. <laughs> I'm not quite sure. But maybe we can make it do CW. Even though it doesn't maybe natively, we can we can we can hack it to, to make it to make it do that. Anyway, it's FM. Um, it'll do dupl duplex or simplex. Um, it's got some noise stuff in it. Um, volume and squelch. A meter that'll measure a signal strength or RF output. It's a 10 watt. Uh, 10 watt radio, so 144 to 148 megahertz. It's missing a knob, which is the RIT knob, um, which might not need, but I'll find a replacement. We'll, we'll make a replacement knob for that, so that'd be kind of machine shop stuff. Um, and it does have a sticker that says FMCW single sideband. I don't, like I said, I think you need the separate unit for the single sideband portion of it. But I might be wrong on that. Um, maybe this is the, yeah, maybe this is the bottom unit. I don't. Yeah, maybe, maybe this is normally up here and then this is the single sideband. This is a single sideband. So yeah, maybe it does have the single sideband unit in it. So I, like I said, I just got it today. Don't know much about it. Um, let's take a look inside. Uh, so here's part of it. Um, you can see that it's all discrete. Lots of, uh, <laughs> lots of electrolytics. So maybe it needs recapping. I don't know. I don't think I want to do that. Um, so we'll kind of do what we need to do and not try to restore this thing perfectly. But um, I'm interested in these things here. I believe these are resonant cavities. So we've seen some things like that called duplexers. And I think this has resonant cavities on the input for selectivity. I think this is the, the front end tuning uh, for the selectivity of this thing. And so it's supposed to have a pretty good receiver. So so that'll be fun to, to take a look at. Um, what else is on the top here? This a little little section here that's cordoned off. So I don't know what that's all about. Um, I don't know where the... Oh, this looks like the... Um, this looks like the um, SWR meter. Uh, yeah, I think that's right down there. We'll take a look at that later. I think that's the SWR meter. 
And here's a big uh, heat sink and it attaches down here. So there must be a transistor that mounts onto there. So this is probably the final amplifier. So I think what it is, is this is probably the final amplifier. Then the receive circuit goes through the, uh, goes through the uh, network here, the uh, cavities, and then it goes to the rest of the circuitry. Um, I see a 455 down here. So that's probably the 455 kilohertz uh, second IF. There's also, I think, a 10.7 megahertz IF on this thing, so I think it's it's double. So let's uh, let's flip it over. So when I took it apart, the first thing I noticed was the speaker was missing. It was some snipped off wire. So no matter what the condition of this radio was, they cut the speaker off and saved the speaker and threw the radio away. So that's not a good sign, but I, I put a different speaker in here just so we can hear some things. And uh, I put a connector on it so I can disconnect it if I need to. Uh, but this is what the uh, bottom of the radio, so the speaker's on the bottom. This is what the bottom of the radio looks like. So it has this really, really nice crystal filter in here, a 10.7 megahertz crystal filter. So again, I think it's a really, really good receiver. Um, it's got those, uh, those uh, cavities, and then it has this nice 10.7 megahertz crystal in it, uh, crystal filter. So this looks really, really high quality. Um, and then there's some things, things over in here. Uh, yeah, I'm not quite sure what's going on down here. Um, and this is a separate board. So there's a board down here, which I think is just the bottom side of the other board. Um, and this, this comes off with screws, so we can, we can take it off as well. Now, when I got it, like I said, it had no speaker in it. And I don't have a connector for the power. Um, so... I kind of just kind of figured out where it comes in. I put a clip lead down here on the plus 18.13.8, and here's a ground. So I'm going to hook up hook up ground, and there you go. Oh, we can hear static. So I'll turn the volume down. Okay, so that's that that's good. <laughs> that's good. And the squelch circuit makes it quiet. So squelch and volume seem to work. That's good. So I figure, well, squelch and volume work. Let's go ahead and inject a one. The front panel says 4000. So I'm expecting that to be 144.000 megahertz. So let's set, hit, hit set up, ugh. let's set up a uh, function generator to 144.0, which it is. And um, this is 144.0 right here. I'm gonna shove it in the antenna and let's turn up the volume. And nothing. Nothing. Okay, so the something's broke. Something's not working. So that's not a good sign. Not a good sign. The other thing you can do, though, just uh, for troubleshooting purposes, you can go backwards in the circuit. So turn that down. So you start out with 144, and then it gets down converted to 10.7, and then it gets down converted to down converted to 455, I think. So. Maybe you can hear 10.7. Maybe we can inject the signal like halfway through. Well, where did we inject it? I don't know. <laughs> Let's just play. Okay, so I'm gonna change my function generator to 10.7 megahertz, okay? Let's turn up the volume again. Oh, listen to that. So here's my wire. Whoop. So if I bring my wire over here to the 10.7 area, we, s we hear it, okay? So that's really, really good news. That means that a lot of this thing's working. So I can turn the volume down and I can play with the squelch. So we know that at least half of the receiver is working. Everything up to 10.7 megahertz. So, th so that's really, really good. So, um, so this test um, tells me that the radio is worth playing with. Okay, if it just didn't do anything at all, I, I, I maybe had other plans for it, but since it seems as though at least half of the receiver is working, and maybe just the front end section is is blown out, you know, maybe maybe there's just one FET on the front end that's that's uh, that's destroyed. Uh, maybe the transmit receive, you know, maybe it transmitted into itself, or maybe they had it uh, hooked up to a short and it reflected back in, or I don't, I don't know. We don't know yet. Um, let's see here. What else can I say about the radio? Um, here's the heat sink and here's the PC board and there's a big, let's zoom down on it. All right, I think you can see right down there, 
we get something better to better to point with. So I think that's the final transistor there. It has two big ears on it, and it's got a lot of solder associated with it. And I believe the heat sink goes to the other side there. So yeah, I think that's the uh, final final transistor. Um, and it looks like a, a Mitsubishi part. I think that's the three Mitsu. I think that's right, a Mitsubishi part. All right, here's the back of the radio. Here's this big heat sink. And there's our antenna. This is where the uh, power connector goes. And then there's this big giant connector here that has a whole bunch of stuff on it to hook up extra goodies. Uh, that one is this thing and it has a standby audio mic input. It's probably for a, um, a trans, what do they call those things? Uh, I don't remember what they call them now. You use one radio and convert it frequency wise to a different radio with an external circuitry. It's almost put like putting a mixer in it to mix it up to a higher frequency, but you have to have a bunch of electronics and stuff. I think that's probably what that is for. Um, yeah, so I think, I think this might be the, uh, the extra unit that does the, uh, that does the, uh, single sideband. Let me check into that. Okay, well, it's a little bit hard to see here because it's just a Xerox or something, but you can see here's the radio with the uh, microphone connector on it. And that bottom unit does not appear in this picture. So I do have the extra single sideband unit. Uh, so bonus, I didn't, know, I didn't even know about that. So yeah, this is the, uh, the fancy version. Uh, so that's really, really cool. Um, and it could be that maybe it's the part that's broken and I can just like bypass it or something, I don't know. Um, but, uh, that's really, really good news. And, uh, yeah, anyway, somebody's been into the radio. Here's a wire here sticking out and <laughs> not connected to anything. Looks like a broken wire. So maybe that's the only thing wrong with it. This is one broken wire. I, I, I don't know. And it, it's in a funny spot. Uh, it goes to a connector on the front panel. So I, I don't know what this is. Uh, be funny if we just soldered this on and it all works, but probably are not going to be that lucky. Anyway, this is the first video of probably several on this radio. And like I said, I'm going to try to um, attack some different issues about how you measure things, how you troubleshoot things. Um, should be fun. <laughs>